Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey, how's it going? How y'all doing? How's it going, y'all? Welcome to my channel. I'm Sasha, if you are new. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, my loyal royals. So good to see you. If you are new to the family, welcome to the family, my new loyal royals. So good to finally meet you. Please, please, please make sure you do subscribe to my channel. I am on the road to 300 subscribers, so please make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Please make sure you do share the videos with a friend, the videos, my videos with a friend, <laughs> whoever you choose. Please make sure you go and follow me on Twitter at DragonPink07. I am quite active on Twitter, so please make sure you go follow me on there. Again, please make sure you subscribe, leave me a like, drop me some comments down below. As we get more into this series, I want to know what you guys think about it as well. So please leave me some comments. And again, go follow me on Twitter at DragonPink07. Now, with all that being said, this video is going to be the start to a new series that I'm starting on my channel, and it's in reference to aviation. If you watched my previous videos about advice of flying an airline or an airplane, airplane, airport etiquette, you can click the link in the description down below if you have not seen it. But as you know, if you have watched that video, I do work for an airline, and this video series is going to pretty much be aviation etiquette and what to expect, as well as just a few stories here and there of what it's like for me as someone who works for the carrier. So if that is something you are interested in, please do make sure you A, keep watching, please watch all the way to the end, as well as don't forget, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, as well as share me some comments down below. What do you think? What is your favorite airline? It doesn't have to be domestic, it can be international, any carrier you like. What's your favorite airline? What's your most disliked airline? Even if it's my own, it's okay. <laughs> but let me know down below. So let's get into it. So have you ever wondered what goes on when it comes to what we call turning a flight? So when it comes to turning a flight for my particular carrier, the typical time frame should be between 30 to 45 minutes. So when the plane comes in, the wheels are chopped. Those two black uh, blocks that you see that are put underneath the front tires of the airplane, those are chocks. So once those are placed in, then all you gotta do is when that door opens, that timer starts. And when that timer starts, everybody is in motion. From myself, when it comes to letting people get off, to boarding them down below with the ramp, them offloading and then uploading luggage and freight, as well as provisioning when they're putting snacks on, taking trash off, doing all this and that. And then the crew swaps are being done, pilots, flight attendants are changing, as well as passengers are coming off before the other ones can go on. And even though it seems like there's no, there's like very, very amount, a large amount of time when it comes to doing that, it's not. <laughs> because when it comes down to it, especially if it's a flight that has got to turn quickly, there is a lot that goes on within that 30 minutes of everything in rotation that I just mentioned a moment ago to just any and everything that could possibly go wrong. And from the perspective of myself that works for the carrier, it puts a lot of stress on you. My job in itself is actually quite fun. I do enjoy my job. I have been there for 13 years, going on 14, and I very much love what I do and hope to stay until it's time for me to hit that retirement button and say goodbye. But back to the flight itself, there is so much that goes on. And most people, if not pretty much anyone that doesn't understand what goes on behind the scenes in aviation, all they see is what I call the tip of the nose, the tip of the nose, which is basically me saying the tip of the iceberg. And any and everything that can go wrong during a flight is all people see. Nobody knows the background of what happens and how it also affects us as well. Because when you have things such as, let's see, a big one, maintenance. I like to tell people, maintenance is a big thing. While it seems, yes, maintenance on an aircraft will inconvenience you, but... Yeah. 
you know what that look is for. Maintenance is required because what most people don't understand, and this is based on what I have been yelled at about whenever a flight is grounded due to maintenance. Aircraft are vehicles, people. Aircraft are vehicles. They are vehicles with wings. That is the only thing. Think of it as this way. If you have a car or a truck, van, SUV, whatever you drive, and you are constantly driving it, not even like from like small short distances, but say you're driving that vehicle back and forth every day between two different states. So say you drive maybe an hour plus every single day just to go to work and then come home every day, every day. What eventually happens is the more that that breaks down, the more, I'm sorry, not breaks down, the more that you're using that vehicle Okay, what's bad about this whole situation is that's a swarm of ambulance and fire, fire emergency vehicles. I have no clue where they are going, but good golly, it sounded like it was a bunch of them. But anyway, back to what I was saying. <laughs> anyway, back to what I was saying. Aircraft are vehicles, and if you think of it as your own, Say you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and your time of driving every day back and forth from home to work and vice versa is say an hour plus a day. The more you drive back and forth, the more likely with the long distance, your vehicle is gonna need more maintenance than say someone's vehicle that's only driven back and forth that lives maybe, I don't know, five minutes or less than a mile or so from where they work or the place they have to go to every day is within like a two mile radius versus one that's gotta be within like a hundred mile radius of everyday driving. I know that's a little extreme, but just think, airplanes are only making money when they're in the air. They don't make any money if they're grounded. However, for safety regulations and from previous events that have occurred that have caused the Federal Aviation Administration to change rules and regulations over the years to accommodate the safety of passengers and crew Maintenance is a requirement. Yes, again, it does inconvenience people and it seems like our planes are always breaking down, but you know what though? That's what happens with wear and tear. When you have airplanes that have been flying for nine, 10, 12 years, and they're constantly flying, they're gonna need way more maintenance to make sure that they're safe to be in the air versus an airplane that's brand new, fresh out of the factory and just flying for the first time on this first leg of its trip. And it's only been flying less than a couple of months. I mean, something can happen as far as maintenance with that, but it's less likely versus having a plane that's much, much older. It's gonna require more maintenance. And if you have a problem with your airplane being grounded to get proper maintenance checks done when it's needed, you must not be too concerned with your safety because as far as I'm concerned, my job is to worry about your safety, whether you want me to or not, as well as the safety of my crew and my aircraft. And until that plane is off that gate and it's under the command of the captain, and at that point it's his or her decision, whatever they decide to do, if they need maintenance, they come back to the gate or vice versa, if it's something they can keep flying with and just land somewhere else or land and just make it to their destination safely, then okay. But as far as maintenance is concerned, if it inconveniences you to do that much, you need to know that there's multiple options of transportation to get where you gotta go. There's the train, there's the bus, drive your own vehicle, or heck, if you want to, walk. But when it comes down to it, safety is a big priority. And I need people to really understand that because as someone who is big on explaining things to people, my biggest thing is I can only explain so many times over and over again about maintenance before someone's like, before I'm just like, okay, I give up. But besides that, you know, another big one, weather. <laughs> what is up 
with these fire trucks and and police and stuff. What is going on? But again, another one is weather. People seem to think that we control the weather. Last time I checked, people, if it came down to it, and I was able to talk to God above, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, word on word, him, asking him to delay or cancel your flight due to weather is the last thing furthest from my mind to even worry about when I have other things that I could ask for to beneficial to myself. But that's getting off track. But anyway, when it comes down to it, the job itself is actually, again, it's very fun. You meet new people every day. You never know who you're going to see. And it's just, when you come to the airport, just expect the unexpected. Have fun with everything. Say hi to people. I love to every single passenger. I know it seems crazy, but I love to greet all my passengers. I love to, you know, say thank you, have a nice day. Because you never know who needs a smiling face. And I actually have a very, very, very bubbly personality. And that helps me in the end. And it gets through, it helps me to get through the day a lot quicker. But I do enjoy what I do. And again, I hope to stick around until retirement. I don't know what age that's supposed to be no more. But uh, I do, I love it. And I always recommend for people to watch different things on YouTube with credible sources not something like tmz where you're gonna watch it and be like oh man that must be true when I mean, you know darn skippy tmz ain't true most of the stuff that uh certain other stations i'm not gonna name them put out is not true or they only give like a smidget of the detail when it comes to etiquette if you are going to throw rules and regulations in our faces more specifically my face Please make sure you read the fine print. Don't just tell me, oh, on the website, it says this in bold letters. Please read the fine print. Because if you don't, I will lay down the law and rule on you. And we'll see what happens after that. Should you like me or not, which you probably won't because I will be spitting true detail. But I know that was all over the place. But you know what? That's going to be it for this one. So this, again, this is the first starting point when it comes to the aviation series. This video probably didn't make a whole lot of sense, but at the same time, this one's kind of going off script. So when it comes down to it, I will just make sure I am a little bit more organized when it comes to this particular series of videos with uh, aviation advice, etiquette, and all the other smooth jazz. But if you thought this was like, even this smidge has been helpful, please go ahead and hit that like button. Leave me a thumbs up. Please leave me comments down below. Again, tell me, what's your favorite airline? Or which airline do you not like? What's your, what airline do you dislike? And maybe tell me why you don't like that airline. Or tell me why you do like the other airline. Tell me what your favorite is. If you have a certain uh, state that you've flown to, let me know what state that was that you had a good time in. So if you choose to, but definitely for sure. Let me know your favorite airline. Let me know what airline you don't like. Let's get into a discussion, a respectable, a respectful discussion. Y'all I can't talk tonight. So with all that being said, again, please make sure you do subscribe to my channel. Please make sure you leave this video a like, leave me some comments, go and follow me over on Twitter at dragonpink 7 and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye bye.